Planning documents are available for review down next to Commissioner Karski. Uh, it's just a reminder to silence your cell phone. I think they put that on there for me. Um, contact Craig or Carol if you'd like a listening device. Uh, so the first item is I consider a motion to uh, um, amend, no, approve the agenda, excuse me. So moved. Second. Motion in a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Next item would be to approve the um, minutes. We'll take, we have several, so we'll approve the first one. Approve the special commission meeting minutes from January 10th, 2020. So moved. Second. Motion in a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Uh, next item would be to amend the minutes from the January 14th, 2020 a meeting to correct the spelling of two names, the listing of two job titles, and the listing of a university in the refugee resettlement item 10. Madam Chair, I'll, I'll make that motion uh, to correct the spelling of two names. Our uh, recording secretary does a great job of doing this stuff, but it, it can be difficult to get those things correct. Yes, and we appreciate people letting us know when there's a correction to be made. So I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> Motion passes unanimously. Uh, next would be to approve the um, commission meeting minutes from January 14th as amended. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Next item would be to um, bills to be paid in the amount of $2,824,607.37. Pay the bills. Motion and a second. Any comments or questions, Commissioner Barth? Uh, Two million eighty-seven thousand of this goes towards jail construction, so that takes the biggest chunk out of it. Yeah, thank you. Um, any other comments? All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Uh, motion passes unanimously. Next item are reports. There's a report for the Minnehaha County Register of Deeds Revenue Report for December 2019 for review takes us to item five, personnel actions. I'd consider a motion to approve routine personnel actions. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Uh, next item, abatements. There are none. Item seven, notices and requests. There are none. Item eight, planning and zoning notices. There are none. Item nine, petition for compromise. The lien, there are none. This takes us to public comment. If there's anyone here today for public comment, this is your opportunity. We have a much smaller crowd today. It's easier for me to see people getting up. All right, if there's none, that would take us to regular business. Our first item is to consider a resolution to appoint the Minnehaha County State's Attorney. Move for approval. <coughs> Second. Excuse me. Madam Chair, uh, just in this, trying to be clear, the person we're hoping to approve would be uh, Crystal Johnson. <laughs> yes, he's here with us today. <laughs> we're excited about that. All right, so I have a motion and a second. Are there any other comments? Commissioner Barth. We, we had some uh, uh, good uh, candidates that we interviewed, and uh, uh, I, I appreciate those that uh, put their name forward. As do I. We did have, it's, um, it was a tough choice, but we, we are here today to go ahead and appoint Crystal Johnson. And so, is there any other comments? Would you like to make any comments? We <laughs> I just want to thank you for this opportunity. Um, I've been at the state's attorney's office now for roughly 15 years uh, with a three-year break there while I was on the bench. Uh, it's my home. It's where I live to serve. So thank you very much for the opportunity. I look forward to moving that office forward. We continue to work hard. Last week we got convictions on a homicide trial and a violation of a protection order trial. So we continue to work hard and I look forward to the opportunity to lead those, that office. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we had a motion and a second. Roll call vote, please. Karski. Aye. Barth. Aye. Benega. Aye. Bender. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Congratulations. Thank you for agreeing to serve. All right, so that takes us to item 11, which is a presentation by the Southeast Council of Government. Good morning, Lynn. Good morning, how are you? Great. 
Got me keyed up. Okay, perfect. So I'm just going to kind of run through the South. And I heard you had a short agenda today, so they said I could take as much time as I wanted. No, I'm as just kidding. 10 minutes. As much time. <laughs> up to 10 no, minutes. No, I told them I run through this quick. Parachute needs to identify herself. Yeah. Lynn Keller Forbes, I'm the executive director of the Southeastern Council of Governments. Uh, Minnehaha County is one of our members, and so you've asked me to come down and just kind of update you on what do we have going on. So I'll kind of skip through most of this stuff pretty quickly. I think some of the stuff that's new and fun that you'll be interested in is probably the housing stuff. And really, we started that partnership um, uh, with you guys several years ago, and it's really grown and expanded through the years. So we're one of six planning districts. We serve six counties in the southeastern part of the state. We operate under a joint cooperative agreement of our six counties and our four first class municipalities. Uh, membership is voluntary and you guys are members of that and have been long standing members of that as well. In 2019, we had revenues of about $1.8 million um, from a variety of sources. A majority of those comes from two different organizations that we always also run, which is the Southeastern Development Foundation and Dakota Business Finance, which I'll talk about a little bit later on. Um, in dues, we took in about $280,000 in dues last year. Um, we do a lot of different things. Um, primarily, we write a lot of uh, water, wastewater, those kinds of infrastructure grants and loans for different entities. Um, last year, the breakdown was about $83.7 million. That's a little bit skewed because we wrote the two loans for the city of Sioux Falls for their new wastewater treatment plant. So at $65 million, that can, can really skew your numbers when they come in with an application. Um, basically, the return on investment would have been for every uh, dollar that was invested. There was an, a grant or a loan, a low interest loan of about uh, $294 for an ROI of uh, $2,492, $29,000, I should say, percent. Um, I'm always trying to focus when I talk to you guys about how does that affect you in Minnehaha County. Of, of that $83 million, $70 million came into Minnehaha County, and again, a majority of that went to the city of Sioux Falls. Um, breakdown of dues, total dues paid in Minnehaha County was 152000 So again, the ROI on that was $461.76 for every dollar invested. We also do land use regulations, comp plans, zoning ordinances, municipal ordinance, subdivision ordinances. We don't charge anything extra for those. So a lot of our second and third class municipalities take advantage of those. Uh, we also serve as the coordinating entity for the Metropolitan Planning Organization. Those of you who have had the pleasure to serve on the UDC, that's what that is. If you're a, a city that's over the size of 50,000, you're required to have an MPO uh, per the Federal Highway Administration. So that's the area of the Sioux Falls MPO. Um, all the money comes to us from the, it goes from Federal Highway to the Department of Transportation and then to the Southeastern Council of Governments. And then we enter into subcontracts with you. I think you just uh, signed that not too long ago. And the money flows through us back down to you. Last year, about 49000 uh, went directly to you for staffing and travel for your uh, planning departments. And then there were a couple of studies that also came through that as well that you would have been involved with, which was the Maple Street, uh, Park Street Corridor, and then the I-29 interchange modification uh, for exits 3, 4, and 9. We also run the Southeastern Development Foundation, which does uh, both uh, GAP, low interest uh, or, uh, loan funding for businesses, and then also we do affordable housing through that. We had a great year in 2019. Um, we overall, through the years since 2002, we've done about $27 million in loans through that program. And we did 31 in 2019, about $4.6 million for us. That's a record. Of that amount, $3.7 million and 22 loans went to uh, businesses in Minnehaha County. Uh, just a few, uh, to give you a taste of a few things that we helped, uh, were involved with last year's AT Analytical, which is in Baltic. Uh, we assisted with the Gage Brothers uh, Concrete, their new um, building and their equipment here in Sioux Falls. One of the most exciting things that I think you'll be interested in is just kind of the affordable housing for uh, a long time, and, and uh, Auditor Bob Litz kind of got us involved in this. Um, but we have served as a nonprofit developer here in Sioux Falls. It's very difficult to find um, people that want to work on low-income houses because the profit margins just aren't that great. So one of the things we've done is we've purchased uh, the governor's house, which is built by prisoners in Springfield, and then we have had them delivered here uh, on site. We've put on the garages, the foundations a lot, all those kinds of things, and then we've sold them turnkey. 
Uh, Bob actually approached us in 2014 and said, we've got some lots. Can we give them to you? Will you develop them and get them back on the tax rolls? So these are the first four lots that you guys gave us that we developed five uh, houses on. And now those first five have turned into over 40-some that we've developed through the years. And we're on schedule to do 14 of them this year. We bought a bunch of land up in the north um, west part of town, so we'd primarily kind of been focusing on that. It's in the area of um, kind of Maple and Marion in that, in that area by the new middle school up there. We did eight governor's houses this year. All of them have been sold with the exception of one, which is under contract uh, to sell the first part of February. They did a new design. We were the first ones that put this together this year, but this works better for your narrow lot, so this is how they look on the outside of them. Um, we get a lot of questions, are these manufactured homes? No, they're not. They're two-by-six uh, stick-built homes. Uh, they don't come in pieces. They come all built in one piece. In fact, they're so energy efficient, they need air exchangers on them. But this just gives you kind of an idea, what do they look like on the inside? South Dakota Housing actually used ours this year and had a, um, a firm come in and actually do staging in it because they used it to film their videos for all of their uh, new marketing. So. Uh, these look a little nicer. I don't have the money that we usually go in and stage them, but the pictures sure turned out nice. Um, these do come, they're 1,200 square feet. They do come with three bedrooms and two bathrooms. Um, we put a, we finish them so they come with all the appliances including a washer and dryer. We put them on a full unfinished basement. We put on a two car attached garage on that as well. I've got it listed at 183.9, but there's a lot of funds that we put into this to buy down that mortgage. So there's a $14,200 zero percent uh, grant that disappears over five years. It's it's forgiven in increments. Uh, if you live there five years, it would be nothing. If you sold it in year three or four, you'd repay. Um, that percentage that was left in South Dakota Housing takes a second mortgage on that. So that really buys down uh, what the homeowner has to borrow in funds. And then the Southeastern Development Foundation also um, provides a 10,000 zero percent loan. They don't have to make any payments on that. It just sits there. If they ever sell the house or they try to do a cash out refinance, then we would uh, have them repay that as well. But saves them another about $400 a year in interest and some of those kinds of things as well. We've gotten those funds both from Dakota Business Finance and CCOG have donated to that as well. So it's just that first mortgage then is down to about 160000 for a brand new home. Um, so we've done a total of 40 sales from 2015 to 2019, uh, about $6.3 million. I know taxes are always a big issue, and, and if you estimate the what we have sold those for and 2% of the sales price, that's an overall in impact per year of about 133000 that it would be generating based on off of just those rough numbers. We've also gotten in the habit of where people have started giving us houses, and so we've someone gave us this house, and we moved it in. <laughs> um, We'll try anything once. Um, but you can see as, as we, we'll put brand new siding on it, we'll put new windows in it, we put a new front door in, a garage, all those kinds of things. So you can kind of see the progress on it as well. Um, the city of Sioux Falls has also asked us to be involved with their buyout of their flood properties on Rose Lotta. So of the first eight houses they bought, we took three of them. And we'll be moving those um, to, a, we're working on some land of where we want to put it. It wouldn't fit into our development, so it's not going uh, up to our grasslands development. We're buying another piece and, and plan to put it there. They did call us and give us this twin home. It's on the corner of um, 33rd over by Augustana. They bought out all that area that was flooding. It's, a, it's too large to move as one. We couldn't get it down the street, so we'll actually split it in half at the garages, and so we'll move it in two different pieces, and then we'll relocate it up to grasslands, and we'll leave them separate, so we'll end up with just two individual homes. These are about two bedroom, one bath on the main level, and then uh, we haven't kind of made the determination whether we'll do anything in the basement or not. The other thing we run is Dakota Business Finance, which actually serves the whole state of South Dakota and some counties in Minnesota, Iowa, and Nebraska. It offers the SBA 504 loan, which is primarily used to purchase buildings, can also be used for equipment, uh, leasehold improvements, and those kinds of things as well. Structure, so the bank takes 50% of the financing. Uh, SBA actually issues bonds for the other 40%, and then the home buyer can get in for, or the uh, business owner can get in for as little as 10% down, which can make a huge difference for them as well. We had a good year last year. We did 28 loans, about 18.4 million um, in the entire state and in the surrounding states as well, with a total economic impact of about 49.6, uh, almost 50 million last year. In South Dakota, that came up to be 22 loans. Um, our other six were in uh, Iowa, Nebraska, Minnesota. 
Um, this just gives you an idea. There's um, several other CDCs in the state. Typically, if you add all the other CDCs together in the volume that they're doing, we usually do more in volume and loans than all the rest of them put together. So we're doing a lot of uh, stuff in the state. A couple of ones we did last year is Sunderman Manufacturing, which is, again, out by Baltic. Uh, the Ramada, someone did a purchase, and they're in the middle of doing some renovations in that as well. So we were involved with that. Uh, we did Fox Print, which is building a brand new building, and have, in fact, we're hoping to close on that very soon. Uh, Hot Springs Spa bought their own building, and we were involved with that as well. And that's all I got. How did I do? <laughs> Was I in the 10 minutes? Okay. You did good. <laughs> do you have you. any questions? Questions? Commissioner Barth. Um, going forward, uh, will the uh, census affect funding from the federal government for, like, the uh, MPO or whatever? No, I was just having a conversation the other day with Jim Feeney about that. And the next big um, break of where you would come would be 200,000. Now, the, the under is that we'll, we'll hit that 200,000 um, because the, and, and I was confused too. I looked and I went, well, if you add all these together that are in the area, you're going to get 200,000. But of course, like the federal government, the urbanized area is really just confined kind of to the city of Sioux Falls. So if you look at that, we probably won't hit the 200,000. But if you do, it does somewhat change some of the requirements. I'm not sure exactly if it would change funding, but um, the thought is that we won't hit that 200,000. So it really shouldn't have any kind of an impact on, on where we're at. But that's the next big break. And, and there's also always some legislation to try and change what that number should be. Should it be 200,000? Should it be 250000 We get about a million dollars a year is what we take in from that process total that we kind of share among all of the entities that are in the MPO. But it, would it be to our benefit to have that 200000 I, I don't really know what the ramifications would be if we hit that next level. I'm not sure if there's more funding involved. Or less. <laughs> or, <laughs> I, I, yeah, or just more requirements and less funding, or I, I don't have an answer for you on that. could always invite a friend to come here. <laughs> Any other questions? Well, thank you very much. That's Thanks. very informative. Appreciate you being here. Madam Chair, I'd Commissioner just like Parks. to make a comment that I think the regular citizens don't understand the ramifications of this organization and uh, uh, how integral it is to virtually all the governments in our area. And it's something that uh, people should uh, look into and, and learn more about. Um, I, I really had little awareness of it until I ran for office. I would agree that if you're not involved in any any governmental entities, it's not an organization you're probably super familiar with unless you're looking for some financing. But um, it is a great benefit. And uh, Commissioner Karski. Just a comment to that. I, one of the first meetings that I did for UDC, I was on the city council at the time, back in 2011, I believe it was. So going back a few years, but Steve Metley was the chair of the, the group at that time. And you know, it, this is an example of some of the things that happened when the um, sound barriers went up along Interstate um, 29, south of 41st Street there. Um, the original plan was to put up basically gray concrete barriers. And um, that group had the discussion quite honestly led by Steve that no let's do the pink quartzite make them kind of like our community is and that's how they changed from what it would have been a gray concrete wall to something a little bit nicer at least when you're driving down the interstate so those are the types of things that the UDC and the MPO can influence so no doubt I mean they're involved in a lot of long-range planning that is um, affects every citizen of Minnehaha County when you think about it, particularly when you look at roads and how people get from one place to the next. So thank you. All right, so that takes us to item 12, which is to consider a motion to authorize the state's attorney to sign an agreement with Paragon Health and Wellness for blood, blood draw services. Good morning, Drew. Good <coughs> morning, commissioners. Uh, Drew DeGroat from the state's attorney's office. We are seeking uh, authorization to uh, sign uh, an agreement with Paragon Health and Wellness. This uh, is a, the previous company was Test Point. Uh, they have changed ownership. So we're just updating the contract. Uh, this is a state's attorney's contract. It will be, uh, as of right now, we don't know what the exact cost will be, but it will be over 25000 So that's why we're seeking your authorization for the state's attorney to sign the contract uh, per your um, um, compliance with your uh, your rules, uh, commissioners. So um, the contract's not changing. Uh, the fees will remain the same. Um, so if I, you have any questions, I'd be happy to take them. Any questions for Drew? 
If not, I'd entertain a motion to approve. Move for approval. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Next item is item 13. It's to consider a motion to declare Treasurer's Office POS cash register system as surplus for disposal through Data Systems, Inc. Good morning. Good morning. Um, we have a motion before you today to, to declare our cash registers that we had in the Treasurer's Office as sur surplus property. Uh, we've um, already, the we purchased new ones through retail data and that's what the old ones were too, and they agreed to dispose of them for us with, at no cost to the county. And uh, the reason we're getting rid of them is because they were supported by um, Windows 7, and that no longer will be uh, uh, supported, and it would risk the county's security and stuff to the other networks that are involved in ours. So hopefully you can approve it. Yeah, sure. Commissioner Barton. Question. Uh, Pam, by the way, uh, you're the treasurer of the county, and I don't think you got to say that. But oh, anyway, okay. um, sorry. How long have we had these uh, machines? I have no idea. You know, long as I've been there, and that's at least 16 years. So they predate your uh, yeah incarnation. Um, well, obviously, uh, Windows 7 is uh, no longer functioning in any way, except as a scam, I, <laughs> from what I've heard. Uh, so. Uh, and we did work with IT on this too. So. I'll make a motion to approve this. Uh. Second. Motion and a second. Any further comments or questions? If not, roll call vote, please. Karski? Aye. Barth? Aye. Benega? Aye. Bender? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay, that takes this next item as a legislative update. Carol Muller. <coughs> Morning. Good morning, Commissioners. Carol Muller, Commission Office. Uh, Craig normally is doing this for you, and as you'll note, that he prepared the memo for you. But uh, Craig headed up to Pier yesterday, so he could be at Legislature bright and early this morning. Uh, I just want to talk about what his main project is this week while he is serving as a lobbyist for Minnehaha County. He is working with Senator Wayne Steinhauer on gathering co-sponsors and along to gather outside agencies and organizations to support a local option, bed, board, and booze tax bill. Changes to the bill this year include allowing one or, or any combination of bed, board, or booze to be taxed up to a maximum rate of 1%. And this is often referred to as an entertainment tax in many municipalities. Municipalities have already been granted this uh, ability to do that tax. And this is very similar in uh, granting similar authority to that. Dollars raised would be required to be spent on public safety, rehabilitative, mental health, intervention services, and medical related expenses. So that is the main thing that we're working on. I know that. Uh, um, Senator Steinhauer has received a lot of support for this um, and we look forward to hearing more about that this next week as it drops. A couple other bills just will mention Senate Bill 2 is uh, requiring the DSS to fully support a statewide centralized resource information system and um, you guys have been very supportive of that in the past. Senate Bill 35 is uh, revising the appropriation for the State Veterans Cemetery which is located within Minnehaha County. Senate Bill 46 is revised provisions related to the restoration of competency of criminal defendants. This allows for treatment to restore competency to be conducted in county jails with the county if the county sheriff concurs with that. And then Senate Bill 51 is authorizing the possession of a concealed pistol by employees in the county courthouse, which would not be our building, it would be the county courthouse, which they're currently prohibited in. Um, only a few bills have been dropped at this particular point. There will be a few hundred more that will be dropped over the next two weeks, and we'll continue to give you weekly updates. Thank you. Any questions for Carol? Commissioner Barth? Let, let Gerald oh, go. go ahead. I, I occasionally speak, but Gerald rarely speaks. Uh, <clears throat> I was out there last week uh, with the East Dakota Water Development District, and uh, I talked to many of our, our legislators, and certainly the... I mentioned uh, the veteran cemetery to many of them, but everyone wants it done, but nobody wants to do it. Um, I, uh, uh, there's a water district 
uh, bill that will be coming up to rearrange the, the border boundaries of uh, the water districts, adding uh, uh, counties, territory to the uh, Vermilion uh, drainage district. Uh, and some of that will be cut off from uh, the uh, uh, East Dakota Water Development District, but it makes it uh, so that <coughs> the boundaries of the drainage uh, district c more coincide with the the drainage basin of of the of the Vermilion River. Um, so right now we are uh, uh, taxing people who drain into the Vermilion River into the East Dakota Water Development District, which is mainly the Big Sioux River. Um, and along those lines, uh, uh, a lot of the groundwater that's pumped out in wells is getting uh, more nitrates, and so the water, uh, rural water systems uh, 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 mix it with uh, 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 water from other sources like the uh, Lewis and Clark pipeline to get the nitrates down to where it uh, uh, meets federal standards, which is 10 parts per million. And that's uh, uh, getting more difficult as we add uh, things like Agripore up in uh, Lake Norton, which is uh, putting large amounts of nitrate into the water. Uh, but the s state is working on that, and uh, hopefully uh, uh, we'll keep that under control. But uh, I just wanted to mention uh, that issue. Thank you. Commissioner Beniga? Uh, I had a chance last Friday to speak to Mr. Steinhauer for a little while, and um, he's very, very engaged in the 3B support, bed, booze, and uh, board, I guess. Um, he also asked to make sure that we understood that he also needs our help in contacting some of the representatives and senators when they get through this process, but he's very confident that he has a good chance of making that happen. So um, I appreciate his work. He mentioned Craig's name obviously a couple times and appreciates the work that he does, but I think we need to capitalize on that opportunity and at least see where that's going to go because that will make a difference to what we do as a county. Absolutely. Yep. And he has been really leading the charge on that and we're really appreciative for that. I'm Commissioner sure. Barth? Yeah. <coughs> Wayne's wife just had surgery, and so uh, our concerns go out to that. But, uh, you know, just a few minutes ago, we approved uh, a contract for blood draw. Clearly, that's <coughs> the kind of thing that alcohol forces us to do, alcohol in our community. I've long been an advocate of raising the taxes on alcohol to cover some of the costs that alcohol causes county government. And uh, this potential uh, revenue source, bed, booze, board, whatever, uh, <coughs> is the kind of thing that could help with that kind of expense that we continue to have and not at a decreasing rate. I mean, it's costing more and more every year to, to take care of the uh, criminal justice, public safety issues related to alcohol. I certainly agree. Are there any other comments, questions? That's all be lots more to come. Every legislative session is interesting. Commissioner Beniga. Sorry, one thing I forgot to mention uh, was I'm wondering if Craig could put some facts together for us so that we're all on the same page to make sure we're talking about the same thing as a group. I know he's been working on that a little bit, so yeah. we will get that out. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right, so that takes us to item 15, which is liaison reports. Are there any liaison reports this morning? Commissioner Karski. Last week <laughs> we had a um, joint meeting with the Minnehaha County Economic Development Association and the Lincoln County Economic Development Association. Um, I think you're all aware that um, we're actively searching for a new um, executive director of those um, and the search is going well. Qu plenty of very qualified candidates from um, the committee's report. So is limited as far as the scope of what's been happening um, as far as the association activity, but we are hopefully in the next few weeks going to fill that position. Commissioner Barth. Question, uh, where does a person put their application in? Not that I'm putting it in. Uh -huh. Actually, um, if you go to the website of the 
of Makita, um, you would find the process there. And I don't know if that closed last Friday or if it's going to ah. this Friday. I can't remember. But um, we are using a HR um, firm, a local HR firm, for the process of finding the proper most qualified applicants and trying to keep it local but realizing that there might be somebody that wants to come to or maybe back to Sioux Falls that hasn't lived in the community for a while so we're not just limiting you have to be familiar with this area very recently but we are willing to look outside if there is somebody that really wants to come here anything else Com Commissioner no, Beniga no go ahead I know he's liaison to something. Um, <laughs> so uh, while I was in Pierre, uh, we had a, a session with many legislators uh, from both parties uh, in the leadership actually, uh, and the rural water systems and the water development districts. And uh, one legislator from Minnehaha County uh, talked about the area that he grew up uh, near Madison, uh, uh, there's nobody living out there where he used to live and we don't need to replace our bridges and we don't need to repair our gravel roads and I thought it was quite a shocking statement um, I believe that we do and I believe that one of the reasons why Minnehaha County has prospered so much is because of the fact that we have a road network second to none in this state um, for economic development uh, crop to a town or whatever shoppers to town and um, I, I really reject that idea he also suggested that this was just a three-year temporary phase that weather goes through even though we've had record rainfall the last two years he referenced some rainfall back in the 1870s well it wasn't as much as in 2019 and it wasn't as much as in 2018 and uh, problems going forward uh, might get worse. That's what the DOT thinks, that's what the governor thinks. Uh, we're gonna have more flooding, worse flooding, and we need to be more resilient, more prepared, and uh, that's my report. Thank you, Commissioner Benega. I just wanna say I do have liaison reports, and the one that I was supposed to be at last <laughs> week, Carol filled in for me and went to the uh, fair board meeting, and. Uh, the fair board did release its audit report and frankly it's very clean uh, there's a couple of minor issues but very positive and I hope that if people want to look at that they can go online and obtain that well that's good news that usually comes to the Commission as well, well so we should be able to see that that's very good news thank you um, I just would kind of piggyback on uh, Commissioner Barr's comments that I did meet with the DJ Boothy our highway supervisor last week and there is an amazing amount of work going on to keep our roads in good shape. There is um, definitely concern. Uh, I'm sure the mayor will be quite excited to hear he'll get to talk about potholes a lot again this spring. Um, the freeze-thaw cycle and the amount of moisture that was in uh, the, the road bed going into the winter is going to cause problems this spring. And so folks just need to be prepared that you know, there are going to be issues. Um, almost likely under the best of circumstances and so we need to just be um, prepared for that you know they we talked a lot about work of the UDC and the MPO and how that you know funnels into the work that we do um, from a planning standpoint from an application for um, you know funding and the, the maple project that we're working on all of those entities work together and so um, it's good to, to see the amount of collaboration that goes into those projects, the amount of pre-planning, um, and I'm just very appreciative of the amount of work that um, our highway department is doing, not only in keeping um, the snow off the road, trying to keep up with the ice, it's been a constant challenge, um, but in planning and looking forward to um, replacing roads or maintaining the roads so that they are in the best condition, and that goes to bridges as well. So a lot of work and a lot of challenges. Every construction project uh, comes with its own set of challenges, and so they're working um, through some challenges right now that we, we might hear more about later. Any other liaison reports? All right, new business, any new business? Hearing none, any old business? 
If not, I'd entertain a motion to recess. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. We'll take about a 10-minute break, and then we will reconvene for an executive session. Thank you.